my first memory of going to the theatre would be the Air Gaiety in 1980-something. I don't know when. I'd have been really wee. It was primary school and we went to see Cinderella. And I think it was Johnny B. He was one of the ugly sisters. And my first memory is them coming into the audience and me hiding under my seat and hating it. Absolutely hating it and was never went back to theatre for years after it because I was so scared. So that was my very first and then my first enjoyable experience in the theatre. Would I was I got a lot older because I'm for Drossen, so there was no theatre. Um, I would have been about 17 and my auntie took me as a present to see Les Mis in Edinburgh Playhouse. Oh god, I don't know what year that would have been, 90s. And uh, first half I was just like, oh my god. God, it's a show about war and the revolution. Ugh. And then act two, I just cried non-stop <laughs> and totally loved that. And that was the first time that I suppose I'd went to a theatre and went, oh, right. I, And I was a, a teenager as well, so I had the unrequited love on my own stuff. I was like, oh, that's all just been written for me. So that's my first, that's my first memory. I love being in the theatre. I'm loving it. Well, I've actually got loads of answers for this. So, for, for performances that stay with me is everything Anne-Marie Timoney ever did at the sets. Because for me, Anne-Marie Timoney was a total example of world-class theatre with a working-class actress at the heart of it. And everything she did was honest and truthful and she spoke in a voice that sounded like mine. Except Anne-Marie's deeper voice than me. Um, also, in terms of performances, Years ago, actually, I had to, I, we were lucky enough, I directed one of Douglas Maxwell's plays, Promises, Promises, and it was um, Joanna Tope that was in the production. And I was really nervous about working with her because she was a much older actress and a big, much, much bigger CV and all that. I've been working for years. And she was, and still is, the nicest person I have ever had the privilege of working with. And probably it, changed my way of thinking about how you need to be as a human being working in theatre, that she is the nicest, most um, collaborative person in the room. And that made me go, that's, that's what you want to be. That's who you should be. So that was really inspiring for me. In terms of actual theatre productions, Bobby Baker at the NRLA was a big one for me, actually, because I did the live art course at the Academy and uh, when I went to see Bobby Baker, I felt like something kind of clicked, like using comedy to view the world and kind of subverting what people think. There was something in there that clicked. And uh, I'm trying to think what other per what other shows had a kind of massive effect on me. I mean, for loads of different reasons, Black Watch, mainly because Again, having done live art, we'd done loads of the movement sort of stuff, the frantic assembly style type movement, but I'd never seen it in a mainstream theatre production. And that sort of woke something up that I went, oh, that's the first time I've seen that used really mainstream that really works and really tells the story, rather than it being a separate genre of theatre completely. I don't really do a lot of acting, but when I do, I would love to do a musical. I've never actually done a musical, and I would love to have a crack at MC and Cabaret. Because I love the musical, and I'd love to have a wee shot at that. Or I'd like to play Mama Rose and Gypsy. Because I think I could do that. I think that's kind of like me. But when I'm older, <laughs> probably, if I ever have wanes. Um, in terms of director production, there's, oh, there's loads I'd love to do. I mean, I love new writing and I think I love working on a production that's never been done before because then nobody's getting anything to compare it to and it's sheer terror in a room because you don't know whether it works. Um, but in terms of a production that exists, I love Blackbird. I'd love to do Blackbird. But David Harrow, I'd love to do, I'd love to get a show at the Steamy because I've never done the Steamy and I'd love to get a show at the Steamy because the Steamy's a wee bit responsible for why I ended up working in theatre, I would say. Um, and I would also like to get a shot at Sweeney Todd for directing. So n none of them really cross over there whatsoever in any way, shape or form. But yeah, I think, I think they would be the top of my hit list. Yeah, they'd be the top of my hit list. 
Anything that's slightly terrifying that's already been done brilliantly is usually the ones I, I kind of feel myself drawn to. So that if it's a colossal fail, I can take the blame for it. But you know, it's still a good piece. I've got two. Uh, my first one is Stanley Baxter, because I've never seen Stanley Baxter as a dame. I, actually, to be fair, Stanley Baxter, Andrew K. Fulton and Jack Mulroy, I've never seen any of them, just in terms of they were in uh, Glasgow. I didn't go on a train till I was 17, do you know what I mean, to Glasgow. So none of these things were really on my radar. And now I'd love to have been there live, because you can't watch video footage and never get a sense of it, because it's theatre, it's a different thing. So I'd love to see what they were like as dames. I'd love to see that. And my other Ian's just because I think she is the god of everything, is I'd love to see Julie Walters do Educating Rita. Just because I think Julie Walters is the best of everybody that's ever been as an actor. And I would have loved to have seen what that would have been like. Especially at the time, you know, at the time of the 80s and when that was on and, you know, aspirations for where you were allowed to go as a working, you know, if we come from a working class background and stuff, I think that would have been really visceral, watching that in Liverpool with Julie Walters there. I'd have loved that. Yeah. <laughs>